Hi, this is Shadi. Today we're going to be talking about the greatest grappler that, in my opinion, could have been. Uh, much like Gordon Ryan today with his sheer dominance and how he strikes fear in the hearts of other grapplers, Tanabe Mataimon was very much the same. So we all know that Gordon Ryan has... Uh, an Achilles heel in a sense which is his stomach problem unfortunately it keeps him away sometimes for a very long time off the mats and competition and you can see even physically he just collapses he's not in his top tier shape I know a lot of you are gonna say there's also the performance enhancing drugs yes but also other grapplers are now doing it so if it was only that uh, he everyone would have been just like Gordon Ryan but nonetheless it did help him for sure he is very talented hardworking and like I said he just strikes fear in the hearts of everyone he beat already the greatest one of them being Andre Galvon so the thing is with uh, Gordon Ryan he is an excellent leg locker and also takes the back and strangles very skillfully but he was not the only one historically there is Tanabe of course uh, today I'm gonna talk about him not only uh, history wise but also uh, some of the myths regarding Tanabe uh, a lot of stuff have been blown out of proportion and have been repeated several times in forums in my comment section and they are just simply false and they did not happen it was just due to the sheer passage of time and the romanticization of things so first let's talk about uh, his groundwork so he was very much famed for this particular uh, strangle the cross choke he got it from a lot of positions First, when he came into the scene in the 1890s, so he arrived in Tokyo in 1890 at the age of 19, and there he challenged uh, Tobari, who was a Jujutsuka, later went on to join the Kodokan, and he throws him with Tomoe Nage, I believe, and then uh, from Kami Shiho Gatame, or the north-south position, gets uh, the cross stroke so what we call today I believe the paper cutter from this uh, position so this uh, defeat obviously caused Tobari to work more on his Neiwaza and he was very much shocked at the skill that Tanabe had um, he was a Fusen Ryu Jiu Jitsu student and also joined the Handa Dojo now these two schools are not in particular uh, specialist in ground technique if you read his interview in the uh, Dai Nippon Judo Shi book by Sanzo Maruyama you would see that he worked a lot on his own on his Neiwaza and also a lot of Jiu Jitsu schools did have uh, shared techniques like the Dojime and also the armbar the strangles all of them I've covered Jiu Jitsu books from the Meiji era and onwards many times and you would see that they share so many techniques together uh, an another technique that he was famed for uh, that was great to get him on the ground was of course Tomoe Nage the one that you see here in front of you it's a great way to not only get someone to the ground but in case it failed you can easily drag them and another one was Moro Tegari um, signature move that he used against Yuji Hiruka before attempting an ashi garami so here you see he has the double leg and the tomoenage and going for strangles and leg locks so not much different than today's jujitsu guys so uh here you see and also morote gari is not a pickup so you it's a great way to pull and then from there you can get past the legs and attack so here you see the finishing uh, position that you should be in uh, against Yuji Hiruka he did pull it and then finishing off with this Ashigarami you see here since he was in this position um, that's when the uh, fear of leg locks and the banning of leg locks started is because of this because Yuji Hiruka did tap out but it was already too late everyone heard the snapping sound and he was injured unfortunately so 
this one here is Ashigarami that he went for against Yuji Hiruka. So now he struck fear in the hearts of everyone and he was he needed to be stopped according to Kodokan Judo. Uh, the next one that he was also good at is Kuchiki Taoshi against Soji. So Soji attempted an Uchimata, but uh, Tanabe countered it with this one. Notice a trend, the double leg, the knee pick, and the Tomoenage. So the, the idea that you have to learn wrestling in stand-up jujitsu is simply erroneous. And old jujitsu guys that were specialized in the ground aspect knew that these were the best choices for the ground. So this idea today that you have to learn wrestling uh, to get to the ground is simply false. Now, you can say it in today's context because um, the leg grabs in judo are now unfortunately banned. But... It's not the case in the past. They always knew that these were the best in order to get someone to the ground. But the man that was able to stop him uh, and wanted to, quote, defend the honor of Kodokan was none other than Hajime Isugai, the man you see here in front of you. He is seated um, next to the woman and you see him wearing a white uh, kimono on top. Uh, so what he did was he decided to challenge him, trained with Kaichiro Samura uh, and really crafted his, ne his newaza in order to just stop him all around. Uh, after the trilogy between him and Tobari and his fight against Hiruka, he was considered a very scary grappler and needed to be stopped. Um, here you see uh, right above Jigoro Kano in the middle is Hajime Isogai. So uh, the first fight, it was very tough against Tanabe. Tanabe was trying to pull him down and fatigue him and get him into Neiwaza. But uh, the fight ended on time limit. But uh, Isogai almost lost the fight. He was very tired. The next fight, he came a little bit prepared. He avoided the guard pulls and the Tomoenage as much as he could and constantly through him with Hanigoshi, the one you see it in front of you, and avoided the the ground. And then when the time finished, Tanabe wanted to continue up until someone loses, but the his wishes were not granted. But uh, scaring him with this particular throw was very important. And of course, uh, defending all his pulls like Tomoenage and his attacks. So he did everything to avoid the ground. Uh, and then just simply kept uh, throwing him and then the final fight which was the most important it went to the ground but Isogai was very much prepared uh, and Tanabe tried to go outside the area in order to reset the fight but Isogai kept dragging him in to the inside and then when the fight was finished so this was the third draw but uh, Tanabe was clearly dominated in the third fight and when they asked him what was the problem he said I am suffering from very brutal case of hemorrhoids so you can see that it can be somewhat laughable or ridiculed even but you never know um, clearly when it comes to something uh, when it comes to health uh, it's something that's not a joke here you see Tobari in front of you so just to mention it um, so this is the story of Tanabe uh, and uh, now let's talk about uh, myths a little bit so the first one being is that he added Ashigarami to Katame no Kata okay let's talk about the first one um, Katame no Kata was fully established in 1880s Tanabe first arrived in Tokyo as a 19 year old in 1990, 1890, I'm sorry. So that right there is just false. So you, you can say, well, it was later modified. There's no uh, evidence. If you go to the Kodokan website and you see, um, read about the Katame no Kata, you, you don't see any mention of it. The second one being is that um, he he did not join the Kodokan. A lot of people say that. He later went on to teach them Neiwaza, Hairikata. Hairikata simply means how to enter. That's it. Uh, there's no evidence. Even if you go to the wiki page, 
the wiki page in the past it was completely disastrous there was all these myths and all these things about tanabe even now if you go to it someone edited it and luckily they sifted a lot of things out fortunately now it says there's no proof but there is speculations that he taught the kodokan there is no proof um, if you read his uh, interview uh, with maruyama he doesn't mention uh, teaching people there or teaching Newaza or anything. Uh, later, he was beaten by Sakujiro Yokoyama. Uh, uh, Oda talks about him greatly, but he doesn't mention anything about him teaching in Kodokan. Uh, also, Isogai, his last fight with him was in 1900. So he already figured him out, not only in the standing, but also on the ground. So why would they need him to go later on and teach is beyond me. So. Uh, I'm glad these myths are now being talked about and they are pulled off of these uh, websites or, or sometimes you see it and then you click on the resource and it's just some uh, not secured site or not a very reputable uh, source. So uh, he was a great grappler. Nonetheless, the hemorrhoid story is funny, but you have to take it into consideration. Uh, I can't imagine having to fight with this condition. Same for Gordon Ryan. A lot of people uh, mock him simply because of his uh, mocking attitude. So they try to return it to him saying, you know, I can't fight. I have a tummy ache, but it is far more serious than this. But sure, there is the performance enhancing drugs. But for me, the problem is simply the attitude because it's not a judo attitude, in my opinion. So if you have something to add, let me know down below. Consider supporting me on Patreon for exclusive content and your support would mean greatly to me. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.